In this video, I would like us to talk about working with rubbing mallets and to go over different techniques working with these mallets. Also, I would like us to see the variety of these mallets and to determine how do they work and what actually these mallets are. You can play your singing bowl by two methods, actually. One method is just striking the ball with the striking mallet. And the other method is rubbing the ball, going around the rim. To do that, to make your ball sing when you rub it, you need a mallet that will produce a friction. Friction in between the surface of the mallet and the surface of the ball. So for example, this mallet is a standard striking mallet it has a uh, felt padding, is soft, and you can use this mallet for striking the ball. If you'll try to rub your ball with this kind of mallet, you will get no sound because the felt will slide on, on the ball, on the surface of the ball, and there will be no friction. So it's kind of pointless. Therefore, uh, we have a huge variety of rubbing mallets and um, they use uh, the same principle as the leather padding, the suede padding, or, or just a wood, a wood with a different firmness. So let me just demonstrate uh, all types of uh, rubbing mallets that I have in my collection. Uh, let's actually begin with uh, wood only. So this is a soft wood aspen. Uh, this is the firmest one, ebony wood, black wood, king wood. This is a little softer than the ebony, but pretty firm as well. And we will discuss in which cases what mallets to use. Uh, another ebony wood, black wood, a little bigger in diameter. Rose wood. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, so, many practitioners they use, um, they could use even a striking mallet, but the wooden part to wrap the ball and it will give uh, a friction. Uh, you can make your ball sing by rubbing it with, with this wooden part, but it's not always good. Um, and again, we will discuss this case as well. And this is the collection of um, suede padded mallets that I have. Uh, they share the same, same principle, as I said, um, they all covered with, with the suede. And generally speaking, <clears throat> the bigger your instrument is, the bigger the diameter of the mallet you will need. Um, I will demonstrate how to play with all these mallets, but just first let me go over them. So, as you see, they come in a variety of sizes, colors. There's so many of them. And they actually, um, when you play them, uh, you can highlight different sound partials of your instruments. So they are very important. There's an uh, importance in the size of your rubbing mallet as well as the firmness of the suede. So, for example, this big mallet. If you can see, it's kind of puffy. Uh, the, uh, the layer of the suede is very thick and it's soft. So, when I will rub my ball with this stick, with this mallet, um, the vibrations will be kind of swollen by, uh, by the suede and um, it will, I will hear my ball playing very soft. 
if I'll play the same ball with this mallet, the layer of the suede is a little thinner. So uh, most likely I will get a high pitch as well and my playing technique will be not as soft. Let me give you a little demonstration of how do I play this big ball with a big diameter rubbing mallets. Um, I have these two, uh, the softer, those, the softer one and the firmer one, and let's see if um, uh, there will be any difference in my, in the sound that I will play. This is how we hold the stick parallel to the wall, and I will go a little fast just to make the ball to vibrate and when it starts singing I will slow down and press the stick against the wall a little harder. So with this stick I was able to play a uh, very low tone it was very uh, soft and the ball was vibrating like pretty strong so that was a very soft low pitch and if I want to um, if I want to play a higher tone a higher sound partial of the same ball um, I will take I will choose a mallet with a thinner layer of suede I will also change my playing technique. I won't hold my uh, rubbing mallet parallel to the wall, but I will rest it with, um, with an angle on the top of the rim and I will press it. I will press the mallet. Now also I start relatively fast and when the ball starts singing, I will slow down and I will press my mallet even more. compare it <clears throat> to the previous sound, the previous mallet, and the previous technique of rubbing. Not even sure if you can hear this low pitch, low roaring sound. Okay. Um, let me take you to a different example. I have this uh, smooth ball, extremely smooth ball, Jambadi, it's about 11 inch in diameter in front of me. And um, I'll play, I'll demonstrate you different techniques, uh, playing techniques on this ball. Um, so um, for this task I have this mallet, um, and this mallet is pretty much worn out. Um, I have this mallet probably for 11, 12 years, and um, when I started to use it, I took sandpaper and I shaved a little layer to make this stick firmer. Uh, why did I do that? Because I wanted to play a high uh, sound partials using this rubbing mallet. So I can still play the fundamental, the low pitch, if I rub the ball holding the stick parallel to the wall. Or I can change my angle and play the high pitch. I can do the same 
with the wooden mallet. But the wooden mallet won't uh, let me uh, be so gentle and quiet uh, with rubbing the ball. I will hear the sound of the friction. If you are using contemporary singing balls with uh, a lot of hammer marks, so uh, the wall is not as smooth as the wall of this ball, uh, rubbing it with a firm wood won't sound really good. You will, you know, you will hear each time you're hitting the uh, the flat spot. Uh, you will hear the impact of your mallet. So consider using the, the mallets with the suede padding. So for example, this is contemporary ball and uh, as you see um, the, the hammer marks are more visible here than on this antique ball. So let me play this ball with a wooden stick. There's too much of unwanted sound. Now I will choose the stick with a little, uh, with a little thicker layer of the suede to play this ball. This way I prevented the ball of sounding the unwanted harsh sounds. Here is another example, a smaller size Tado Bati. And um, I'll use this ball to show you how do I apply uh, my playing techniques to play different tones, to highlight different tones out of the same instrument. So again, I can use this mallet. And just a quick tip. Um, when you start rubbing your ball, before you touch the ball with, with your mallet, you can put one of your fingers on, on the wall in order to prevent, prevent it from sounding the uh, impact sound. So you can start, you can start really low change my angle and I will add a little pressure and as you can see in in this case only my wrist is working now the whole shoulder is moving I will do the same uh, with the wooden mallet.
So in this case, the sound is more piercing. is it's 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 a little it's a little more of uh, introduction of a metallic sound, uh, which sometimes you would like uh, to play this way, but sometimes you really want it to be soft. Uh, so that's the main difference of using uh, the suede padding mallets and the wooden mallets. Now let's talk about the firmness of the wood. And uh, I'll, for this case I will demonstrate a different ball, a smaller ball, because uh, with the smaller balls uh, there is really big difference. I have four little cups. This is the, the smallest cup, this is the biggest cup, and let's uh, run a little experiment choosing the proper mallet playing these cups. This mallet would be still good because uh, it's not too big, it's not too small, but I will actually play it in order to understand this is, is this really suiting me. Um, that would be another mallet that I choose for this experiment and um, I will choose a few of these sticks the rosewood stick and the ebony stick so let's begin with the bigger diameter ball and I'll play it first with the suede uh, padding This is the fundamental tone of this ball. Now I'll do my best to change my playing technique as I showed you before uh, in order to see is there anything else I can play with this ball. And right away I see that this is an impossible task. A because uh, with applying a little more tension, a little more pressure, the ball starts spinning. Uh, so that's the first thing. And another thing, well, probably the diameter of my mallet is too big. So let's choose this mallet. can hear is still the fundamental tone and a little bit of the introduction to a higher pitch. So let's choose the rosewood stick. Smaller diameter and the firmer wood. And pretty much nothing is happening. This is the firmest wood, ebony wood. And all of a sudden, I can hear this high piercing over tone. Let's check uh, a different bowl. Uh, that's a little a smaller ball in diameter and it has a thinner wall. This is the fundamental tone. Aspen wood. And now I can hear two tones playing at the same time uh, my fundamental tone and the higher pitch tone 
one of the overtones. Uh, now I want to isolate this higher pitch, so uh, I'm choosing my ebony wood stick. Success. Okay. The smaller your ball is, the smaller the diameter of the friction mallet, the rubbing mallet you need because, um, well, just a simple logic, if you take a big diameter mallet and you start to spin uh, your small ball, what is happening, the ball is spinning, so you need something small. Let's check this one out. Very hard. The ball is spinning <coughs> with my mallet. So I will proceed right away to wooden mallets. Mm -hmm. And I was going really uh, slow and gentle with this ball. If I'll spin, if I'll spin it too fast, look what will happen. Okay. I don't want it. Uh, let's check the rosewood. Beautiful. A little bigger in diameter ball. That's the fundamental. And this is the mallet with the suede padding. This is a wooden stick, rosewood. Such a big difference, isn't it? So, experiment with different sticks, um, either with the wooden mallets, either with the mallets that have a, a suede padding, and see the results, feel the results. Um, you know, sometimes you uh, play a uh, few balls at the same time, you rub two balls and uh, let's say that the fundamental of your uh, left ball is, uh, is X, okay, like let's say 200 Hertz. Now, you know that the overtone of your uh, right hand ball uh, is a perfect fifth of, of that tone or an octave higher and you want to highlight only the overtone without going into fundamental so therefore you choose different mallets and you apply dif different techniques So you can really variate. You can really variate with your playing techniques and uh, with your with your friction mallets to create something beautiful. To create something very interesting. To sort of uh, design uh, your 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 a three dimensional uh, sound within the space, uh, juggling just with the overtones or or playing just the the fundamental tones. Uh, it takes a little practice and it takes, uh, you know, uh, running some experiments, seeing what is the difference between the mallets for each ball individually. Thank you for watching.